So, time for another project. We got this beautiful customer who just said take my money and build it properly. So, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add this quite cool piston. It misses one teeth and um, it got uh, beautiful white steel teeth rack. Uh, it's kind of hardened, I think, but that's not the point. The point is the plastic here is very good, so it won't uh, get out at the end. So it will not break here. This is the worst point. This is where the most tension is and it will break here if it's uh, not the best material. So. This piston, very cool. Aim top hopper bucking. Uh, this is the middle one. The green one, M90 to M120. This is what we will actually add to this gun. I think the original spring is 150, something like this. We're gonna add a quantum trigger because we're gonna add an Aster. And we're gonna add these beautiful gears. It's ball bearing gears, hardened steel CNC, and it's 14 to 1. So I hope we get a lot of speed out of this gun. And to round it up, we go for a tornado high torque motor. So high torque plus high speed equals beautiful trigger response. Okay, let's stop right here. This is one of the worst parts on this VFC, right after the Mac release. You can't actually get off the stock tube without removing the gearbox. You see it wiggles a little bit. That's something really stupid. You need to remove this little screw, then it wiggles. That's it. The screw is just to fix it. I want to take it apart very fast now. The 
gearbox is out and I'm gonna show you the problem. The thread from the stock tube is actually like cut it out and that's where the gearbox is sitting in. So now I can remove the stock tube while the gearbox isn't between it. And I could just screw it out that much that the gearbox wouldn't actually hold this. But I could not add the little screw from above then. I'm gonna show you very fast. So if I cannot do this I cannot fix the stock tube properly. I could drill a hole maybe from above to uh, to let the screw do the work but now I can't get the stock tube as close as I wanted and I got this wiring problem I will cut the wires with this anyway you have to be very very careful so I recommend you not to remove the stock tube anyway but uh, yeah the wires this is stock are just damaged from the beginning on. This is very sharp in here and uh, you can actually find parts of the wires. Yeah, so if we had it like this other competitors can do this. Yeah, normally I would say this is trash but this is the only one with proper markings. And yeah, we will be stuck on these for a while, I think. Let's just continue to the gearbox. Yes, this is a normal VFC gearbox. I can't show you anything new but in fact I think it's fun to take a first look so this is stock this is not opened at all the piston yeah 70s or something like this it's pretty yeah it's it's fine it's it's pretty good LCU that's very cool. The gears are crap. That's, yeah, it's VFC. They're well made crap, by the way. They're made very precise. That's fine. But it's crap. It's just like uh, sintered metal or steel. Maybe it's steel, but it's. Yeah, whoa, what's this? Okay. So, the shims are actually on the wrong side of the spacer, which is interesting and stupid, kind of. Well, whatsoever. There's an H on this gear, and here we find an S. It's VFC S gears. Whatever this means, it's not really speed. Definitely not. <laughs> By the way, these are not the self shimming gears anymore, as VFC may have realized. This is shit. Next step changing of the piston and then. We are gonna shim in the new gears, which takes a while, so I'm gonna skip a bit and come back for the satisfying moments.
Next step after shimming in the gears is preparing for the Aston. So I just added a little bit of cleaning agent here to get rid of grease on the selector plate. And then I glue it. Please, please, please glue the sticker on the selector plate. Everything else will get you in trouble. Next step is greasing up the gearbox. This is some nice shiny white, let's call it a fat. It's with Teflon grease and yeah, so it's with small ceramic particles basically. I just add it everywhere. And you can do it too with a brush. What's crucial here is on the down on the, on the lower side of the sector gear. I just grease it up now. Uh, you have to clean it up a little bit after greasing, so the aster will actually detect the knob on the gear for making it shoot semi-auto. So, um, for this, uh, yeah, missing a word here. To detect the cycles properly, you need this. Okay, I'm gonna grease it up, everything else, and then we're gonna add the Aston. If the aster is in place, you need to screw it. Make sure you use the right hole. 
Well, in fact, it's uh, possible to use the wrong one, but um, it's not recommended. And if you can just add one normal washer, one isolation washer, and the screw, the isolation washer needs to be placed on the aster, then the normal washer, then the screw, so the normal washer will actually prevent the isolation washer from breaking from the screw. And you have to be careful to not screw it too tight, because most of the time these screws tend to wear out and it's quite harsh to make a new thread into the gearbox. While placing the cables, it's actually the best thing you go signal wire first. This is not how it's meant to be. Meant to be is first the long black cable, then signal wire and red cable, and then the shorter one of the black cable to so the motor. But in fact, you want to have the signal wire as low as possible especially in this VFC gearbox because there is no channel on the point and no cutout on the point where the motor goes in. So if you need to have a cable damaged it shouldn't be the smallest one. If you cut your signal wire nothing works. If you scratch a bit of your black wire. Yeah. So, there is isolation missing. Maybe it's not as efficient as it was when we had the full, I don't know, 50 little uh, strings in there. But uh, it will work. So, um, yeah, make sure the black wire presses down the small red wire to make sure the signal wire will not be cut. Next I realized I'm a bit stupid so I just added the sticker on the other sh uh, half of the gearbox shell which is not needed. In fact, it's actually uh, um, said in the manual that you should not have the sticker for the quantum trigger we're gonna add. So I think they just um, switch the detection from um, black to white to white to black, something like that. <laughs> so. Um, if it's white white, you have a problem. Next step for me is uh, yeah, getting back on the buffer tube. And yeah, I just wanted to show you what happens if you don't screw it on properly. It wobbles. You just have to screw it on all the way to get the little screw from the upside in there properly to make it wobble a bit less and then you can just use the receiver extension nut to fix it and then it's decent. Let's, let's, let's say decent.
let me quickly explain to you why this buffer tube thing bothers me so much. It's because there is a quick change system and if I can reach my quick change system which requires a quite big hex screw only through the buffer tube which requires a big extremely long hex screw and is actually quite hard to reach and a little bit wobbly and stuff. This sucks. It absolutely sucks. It took me like two minutes to get this goddamn spring in there. And this is the worst shit ever. If it's a quick change system, I want a quick change. Oh, by the way, it's absolutely crucial you add the block, which is also in the buffer tube. If you do not, and you use a proper spring like an M120, maybe, um, your gearbox shell will possibly break on the back end so the quick change system will break out of the gearbox if it's not countered by this block and the screw if you have a weak spring your spring guide will wobble and you will have a jam because the piston cannot go fully backwards because the spring is in the, uh, the the spring guide is in the way so strong spring problem normal spring possibly okay weak spring problem you need to add this block and this tends or let's say this this ends in less battery space which is bad of course um, but not as bad as a broken gearbox and sometimes the uh, spring guide itself breaks which is absolutely hilarious a spring guide shouldn't break and normally it doesn't on VFC a metal spring guide tends to break let that sink in for a while <laughs> <laughs> anyway, do not use a spring over 120 and do not forget to radius the gearbox. That's needed. If you do not do this, the gearbox shell will break somewhere. <laughs> if you have the money and you want to do it properly, try to go for a retro arms gearbox shell or something like that. They were quite fine with these replicas, uh, but you will possibly have a broken spring guide anyway, if you use the original one, of course. Well, okay, finally reassembled, the gun shoots quite well. I got this gun back together and yeah, it's like 1.5 joules. That's quite fine for the standard spring and the standard nozzle. I just cleaned up the barrel a little bit. There were some sharp 
edges and um, that's not what you want to get in touch with your hop-up rubber actually. Uh, well, I exchanged the hop-up rubber for aim top. It's aim top uh, 65 degrees I think. This is quite okay for 1.5 joules. This is like the perfect hardening. Um, yeah, and I got a little problem with this quantum trigger. So I just got like 30 possible uh, points where the trigger breaks. Um, that's definitely not what the advertisements say. So I just thought I would get like 151 and not like 29. So I looked it up and yeah, I made everything right. I just removed the sticker, as you may remember, and that's right. You should remove the sticker if it's already there, or you should not use one anyway. Next time I will try to uh, just uh, blacken the gearbox shell a little bit. My theory needs to be proven. Well, whatever. Um, 1.5 joules is perfect and the only thing that bothers me a little bit is this screechy sound the trigger makes.